How y'all doing? Good. Good. So, how, okay, let's put this out. How many of y'all saw that game yesterday? How many of y'all almost had a fucking heart attack? Holy shit, I thought security was going to come. And get, <laughs> Caroline, you need to calm the fuck down. <laughs> no, and if you're a Texans fan, I am. No, I'm not sorry. <laughs> and if you're a Cowboys fan, we are fucking coming after your ass. <laughs> we took out UT, we took out the Texans, and Cowboys, we coming for you. <laughs> fuck yeah, this is our year this year, man. Who that, baby? We that. Who that? Who that say gonna beat them saints? Nobody, motherfucker. Nobody. Oh, hell no. I remember when that shit happened last year, when that referee said, I didn't see it. I'm like, bitch, I have a cataract, and I saw that shit. How the fuck did you not see it? I almost threw my TV off my fucking apartment damn patio going, fuck no. And I'm so glad football started. I really am, because I got so fucking tired of watching beat Bobby Flay. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sick of that, or Chopped. People ask me, I used to have a catering restaurant, so people ask me all the time, why don't you be on Chopped? <laughs> it would not go well. <laughs> They'd have to bleep me to fuck all the time. I'd open up that bass and go, what the fuck is this bullshit? <laughs> Hell, you want me to do with jelly beans and octopus and potato skins? What the fuck am I supposed to make with this shit? <laughs> and then the next thing you know, they whip out some fucking entree. I'm like, okay, y'all bought that shit and brought it. That's it. Y'all didn't make that crap. But what kills me is, I, have you ever watched the, uh, the kids chopped? Or the kids baking? The kids baking pisses me off. These old motherfuckers out there, eight years old, making these five-tier fucking cakes with, you know, hair hanging down and bullshit. The only thing I can think of is, this, fuck, all I had was an easy bake oven. I had to wait for a fucking light bulb to heat up so my little cake could come out. This bitch got a high-density kitchen oven. I'm like, fuck. Such crap. But, yeah, that's what we do a lot when we're not doing comedy. We watch a lot of fucking TV. So I'm glad football's back on again. So, oh, yeah, man. It's like, hell, yeah. And, you know, we walk around the ship, and I try to listen to people say shit about me. You know, because somebody normally does. I'm surprised. What's funny is I said something last night about people saying stuff about my show. I've had friends that have cruised, that have come from my hometown and cruised, and have seen my show. And they come up to me and go, I cannot believe you still talk that way. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, are you new here? <laughs> and then they say shit. This pisses me off more than anything else. And people who are, as you get older, you're going to hear this. And when they start saying this shit, well, you know, at our age. Oh, that's bullshit. No, that's bullshit is right. I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> no idea that why because I'm 67 I'm supposed to be I don't know I, this is my first time being 67 I don't know that <laughs> is somebody gonna send me a memo before my 68th birthday because I need to know that's like when I turned 50 and I got my AARP card I didn't get the fucking manual it just said here you get a discount at McDonald's enjoy it bitch it, I, <laughs> I, nobody told me I the only thing that happened when I turned 50 was my don't give a damn button broke. <laughs> and then when I turned 60, I ripped that bitch right out of the fucking wall. <laughs> oh, my God. And I love being my age. I love being 67. Cause, and then somebody made a comment that said, well, you know, you're only three years away from being 70. And I'm like, yeah. So? The coolest part about that is I realize I, I don't have to fucking like you if I meet you. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, I ain't got time for your drama. <laughs> and you should have hit me up when I was 30, motherfucker, because I ain't got time now. I don't know how much time I can waste on you. Move that shit along. Come on, let's go. Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> and, and, and what amazes me is, is women, we're so stupid with shit because we're afraid of getting older. Look, don't be fucking afraid. It's going to fucking happen. And just embrace it, man. I love my, One of my friends is like, well, you know, Caroline, 60 is the new 40. <laughs> no, bitch. <laughs> 60 is fucking 60. Okay, I know what my 
ass look like at 40. It don't fucking look like that anymore. <laughs> As much as I'd like, and I know it don't fucking look like that. And look, I work with a lot of young kids on ships, a lot, like Martin and a lot of these people. They're in their 20s, and especially some of the production dancers. And I don't know if y'all have seen the shows, but they're fucking amazing. And, you know, we all hang out together at the crew bar. And, you know, I, of course, when I tell them how old I am, I'm like, they, I'm their nana. Uh, they won't talk to me. I'm a woo. She has wisdom. <laughs> I'm the wrong bitch to talk to. <laughs> Because I got a certain kind of wisdom, man. Because, you know, they come, I'm in love. I don't know. I thought he was going to love me forever. Oh, oh, oh. Who lied to you? Oh, that is such bullshit. They're like, well, can you give me any advice? Bitch, they got 1,200 crew members. Fuck them all. I don't care. Here's my, here's my advice. Take your pill. And use a condom. There you go. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> when I was their age, it was the 70s. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Back then, it was find them, beat them, fuck them, and forget them. That's the way we played that game. <laughs> fuck that. And you see, what's funny is, is when I tell them I'm 67, they all go, oh my God, you look so good for 67. But if I tell them I'm 47, that's a whole different fucking conversation, man. <laughs> it's like, damn, bitch, you've been rode hard. <laughs> you want to stop them double crowns? <laughs> part is when you go home, when you, you're you around, like I said, your friends, you know, and my friends, I hate that, they're like, you know, Caroline, you look just like your mama. Bitch, who am I supposed to look like? <laughs> you know, my brother looks like my daddy, my sister looks like my mama and my daddy's family. I'm, I'm like, who the fuck, yeah, I look like my mama. It's the same fucking DNA, motherfucker, it's called a family. What's wrong with you? <laughs> But that's where it ends. I'm not like my mother at all. We do look alike. But it's what's amazing is when you go home, and you, especially if you grew up in a small town like I did. Oh, my God. I, we, I went home a couple of years ago, and I get there, and Mama tells me, she said, hey, Big Rodney passed away. You want to go to the funeral? Now, Big Rodney ran the local uh, bar back home. We had two bars. We had City Bar and we had Como's Bar. We hung out at Como's Bar, and Rodney ran it. But he passed away. He had some health issues. I said, yeah, we need to go pay our respects. So anyway, we take Mama, and we put her in my sister's truck and go to the funeral home. Now, Maurice, Louisiana has a very small funeral home. It's got one room. <laughs> so you got to make an appointment to die. <laughs> oh, no, you got to do it next Wednesday. I'm sorry, we booked up. <laughs> so, so, so I know I'm going to see everybody I know there, right? So we go, we take Mama out of, her, out of my sister's truck, and we put her in her wheelchair, and I look up, and I see this woman walking towards me, and I start laughing, and my sister looks up, and she starts giggling. Mama looks up, and she says, y'all need to shut up. <laughs> and I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> Let me explain. The woman that's walking toward us, in high school, she was the shit. She was, she was the head cheerleader. She was, uh, she was voted most beautiful, her and her boyfriend, most likely to succeed. She married the, the basketball star, went on to college. That didn't work out. He owned the Texaco station. And, you know, and not the good one, not the one with the convenience store attached, just the fucking Texaco station. And, you know, he's a nice guy, but, you know, and, but she, she was always an ass to me because in high school, I weighed over 200 pounds, okay, and I wore cat eye glasses, not because they were retro, because I was poor. <laughs> they weren't cool back in 1965, okay? So she made fun of me all the fucking time. Well, fast forward 50-something fucking years. <laughs> Karma is a motherfucker. <laughs> Oh my God, she is rolling up on me like the boulder in Indiana Jones. That bitch, every pound I lost, she fucking found. I'm like, yes! And she's walking up, and I'm laughing. Now, my mom's in a wheelchair, and she keeps pinching me on my I'm like, stop that! And she doesn't recognize me. She recognizes my sister and my mom. And she then finally it snaps on who I am. She goes, oh my God, Caroline, that's you? You look great. And you know, when somebody tells you, it, 
it seems like 50 minutes in your fucking head that you're trying to think of something to fucking say it's actually a few seconds, but you got to go through a lot of shit to get the right thing fucking out. And then my mama pinched me again and went, you look healthy. That she was going, she called me this motherfucker. Yeah, I'll think. <laughs> and then she, she, people said the stupidest shit at a funeral. And I didn't realize how fucking stupid this woman was until she opened up fucking mouth. And she says, she said, so y'all are here to see Rodney? <laughs> Just riding around town. I told my sister, swing by the funeral home. Let's see who died. Maybe they got some to eat. Because I know about y'all. Everybody has an aunt in their fucking family, especially in Louisiana, that goes to funerals only to see what the fuck the food is there. That's it. My aunt used to come back to the funeral home. Come see, baby. I got some cake and I got some cookies. Look, try that chicken. It's good. Where you got that, Aunt Lucille? Oh, I went to the funeral home. Well, who died? Oh, I don't know, but the food's good. Just try some. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, right after that, she says this. And here it comes. And you're going to hear it at funeral homes. You know what I'm talking about. Well, I guess at our age, this is where we're going to meet from now on. <laughs> I'm like, the bar closed? <laughs> Look, man, we gonna, you know, after this, we're gonna bring mama home and we're gonna swing by the bar and have a couple of beers, celebrate Rod and his life. Why don't you join us? And she's like, oh, I don't drive after dark anymore. <laughs> and bitch, it's one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, they gonna have a wine tasting I don't know about. I'm like, so we go in, we get mama saddled, and I go to pay my respects, right? And <laughs> then I'm, I'm, I'm Cajun, I'm Catholic, and I'm French Catholic, which means when you see the ladies all to society, they're going to say the rosary. <laughs> oh. And where I'm from, they do it in English and in French. That's going to take up some time. I looked at Rodney, I'm like, dude, have a good trip. I'm going to bounce. I'll see you later, man. <laughs> and I go to the kitchen, because that's where the food's at. <laughs> Look, man, where I, and most people in here know, if you Cajun, you Creole, around here, we, when we grieve, we eat. Because <laughs> we upset. <laughs> and it comforts us. <laughs> and I hit the fucking mother load of comfort, man. I walk in, and there's, there's fucking a big-ass ham, and there's some boudin. And if those of y'all who don't know what boudin is, I'm so sorry. And... <laughs> Oh my God! And yeah, Google it. It's right. Or you know, stop and laugh yet on your way home. I don't care. But it is so fucking good. And then they had boxes of Popeyes fried chicken. <laughs> that brought a tear to my eye. And, <laughs> and then they have what I love about this is they have those chicken salad sandwiches that only grandma fucking fairies can make. You know what I'm talking about? They do the white meat and the dark meat and they put it in the food processor with some celery and some onions and then they put that cheap, that good, I call it blue plate mayonnaise and just fucking mix it all up and then they, they put some grandma fucking love on top of that shit and then they put that on some fucking Evangeline made or Sunbeam or Bunny Bread, Bunny fucking bread. You know that cheap ass white bread we take about, oh, oh, oh. You know it's fucking good. It's good, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my God. They cut the crust off, they make little triangles. I'm like, fuck yeah. And I'm eating one, I'm like, damn Rodney, you would have loved this because he was a big boy. He loved to eat. Oh my God. It almost, it's like a high. You're going, oh, this is so fucking good. I'm doing this with a cup of coffee. One of my friends walks in. She goes, oh, you can eat that. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm sorry. My, I thought this was for everybody. She says, no, it is, but you can eat that. I'm like, well, yeah. I said, why? She said, oh, I can't eat that anymore. I think I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> but just mayo. <laughs> Not milk. She said, well, you know what, be that what it may. I'm like, what the fuck you talking? Be that what it may. What, you reading or something? 
She said, well, I don't know about the bread. You see, I, don't, I can't eat. I got to watch what I eat because I'm allergic to gluten. Oh, oh Thank you. <laughs> Bitch didn't even know what gluten was five fucking years ago. She called it glutton. She said, well, I can't. I think I'm, I'm allergic. So at my house, everybody, we are gluten-free. My husband, my babies, my, my, my grandkids, my kids, and my cat and my dog. We all gluten-free. Everybody, I'm like, your animals are going to kill you in your sleep. I'd watch the cat. Because that cat don't fucking need you. He needs your thumbs. That's all the fuck that cat needs. You need to open his can, and he's going to eat that shit, lick his ass, cough up a fur ball, go sit in the sun and look at you and go, bitch, don't even fucking think about it, okay? That's what the cat's going to do. Let me explain something to some people. Petco and PetSmart are making so much fucking money off of y'all for your fur babies. Okay, it's a fucking dog, people, okay? It's a cat, motherfucker, that's what it is. One lady said, well, my dog is like a wolf. It's a fucking chihuahua. A wolf goes, huh? That shit goes, yeah, 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 Selling you fucking dog, I mean, you know, it's dog food. And now I saw uh, on CBS News Sunday, CBS, the, they now make they have called pet plates, where they will make a special plate of food for your dog with vegetables and meat and stuff. You know, y'all remember when people were feeling sorry for senior citizens because they had to eat dog food? <laughs> Fuck it, I lap that shit up. <laughs> you got a steak with some corn and some carrot. Give me the hot sauce. Come on, motherfucker. Let's I'm like, oh my God, they're spending, people are spending a fortune. Back 40 years ago, we had what? Alpo and gravy train. Add water to the dog food, it made gravy. My dog was like, bitch, that ain't gravy. What the fuck are you trying to fool me with? <laughs> now, you know, and you notice people get quiet because you're spending that kind of fucking money. It's, <laughs> y'all do it, y'all spend it. Going, oh, yeah, I spent a lot of money on my dog. And one lady got so mad at me. She said, well, it's obvious you don't have a fur baby. I'm like, no, I'm human. If I have a fur baby, I wouldn't be standing up here telling fucking jokes, bitch. My ass would be rich. I'm fucking the wrong person. I'm like, damn, calm down with that. Look, I had a dog. I loved my dog. I had it 16 years. That dog was was my baby. I loved it. Everybody fuck with Sassy. Your ass, I was going to kill you. All right? And she was, that dog was so fucking spoiled. And people are like, well, I'm sure you fed her. This was 40 years ago. Like I said, we only had, and she only ate Alpo in the can. That was it. Chicken flavored. And I had to pull off of that because it gave her dog fart so fucking bad. <laughs> You know when it's so bad you can taste it in your mouth? Like, oh, 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 oh. I walked in the kitchen one morning before my fucking coffee. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What's wrong with you? And she's looking at me like, I am so sorry. I pulled her off that. I said, bitch, you eating gumbo from now on. That thing was not, no. And people used to get mad at me. I can't believe you feed her people food. Well, fuck it, you know. She's a fur baby. <laughs> I don't know. And that was back then. Now they feeding them people food, you know. But they making it special. Now it's a hundred something fucking dollars. And people are like, well, you don't understand. I understand. I love that little dog. When I had to put her down, it crushed me, man. I was destroyed for like three weeks. I couldn't talk. Because every time I get home, she was not there. I know that feeling. But one of my friends told me, she, she called me up. And she's all upset. She goes, I found out I have to spend $9,000 on my dog, my baby. I'm like, mm. <laughs> and I'm thinking, so you called me for comfort. <laughs> I get it. She's like, I called you for comfort. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. She said, you would have done the same thing for Sassy. Mm. <laughs> if my vet... <laughs> And listen, I, I took it to the vet religiously. But if, if you know, my vet would have said it's going to cost $9,000, I would have gone home and looked at my baby and said, I'm going to make you comfortable. <laughs> and because for $9,000, I can buy another you. Matter of fact, I can buy two of you <laughs> and a car. <laughs> Anyway, I'm making fun of her, 
and P she's getting mad but some other friends walk in right and we start laughing and the next thing I know they whip out their medication <laughs> okay these are all women in their 60s they're all my age and I'm looking at this shit I'm like y'all know y'all had a funeral home right that's kind of creepy and they're like what? I'm like and they're looking at me I'm like what and what I love about this uh, they got their little pill boxes they carry them in at first you know what I'm talking about my mama's got one I think it's awesome it's Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday a.m. p.m. and every time I help mama put her pills in there the only thing I can think of is like damn that would have come in handy in the 70s son of a bitch <laughs> fuck that would have eliminated a lot of fucking problems <laughs> me now I have left the chicken salad and I'm on I'm on my leg of <laughs> fucking Popeyes by now and they look at me and I'm like what and they're like well wh where's your your box I'm like my what oh no I don't I, I have some Altoids <laughs> they're like wait you, you you're not on medication um kind of <laughs> <laughs> No, they drug test here. I can't do that. <laughs> and she said, well, what are you on? I said, uh, Coors Light. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Crown Royal. <laughs> Merlot. <laughs> One of my friends says, Caroline, you know that's great, right? That the doctors say that people in our age, one glass of wine a night. And I'm like, one glass? <laughs> Bitch, that's, that's like one chip. That shit don't happen at my house. <laughs> Saddest part of my night is when that empty bottle hits the bottom of my trash can. I'm like, son of a bitch. Ooh, Walmart's still open. <laughs> Then they stop and they look at me, they're like, wait a minute, you, you look different than us. You, you even act different than us. They're like, you, you still smoke? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go have a cigarette after this. <laughs> and you eat what you want. Yeah, I eat what I want in moderation. And you take no medication. No. Nah. And you drink. I believe we covered that. <laughs> and they're like, and you, you do have a different look. What's the look you have? I said, evidently happiness. <laughs> And they're like, well, what makes you happier than us? No, no, no. I started laughing. I said, how long have you known me? They're like, since first grade. I said, right. You ever get a wedding invitation from me? <laughs> <laughs> and one of my friends go, oh. I'm like, bitch, what's the meaning of oh? She's like, well, you don't have a man. I said, you're right. I don't have a man. I said, you have a man, and what the fuck you do to him? He used to be hot. Why is he cleaning his ears out with his car keys? Why is he doing that? So, bitch, you ain't got a Q-tip in your purse? No, I've never been married. I came close twice. I dodged the bullet. And people ask me all the time, but then now, at my, I just tell them, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> It's true, man. Look, when I graduated from high school, I did go to college for a little bit. I, I decided college wasn't for me. So back in those days, if as long as I was going to school, my daddy let me live in his house. Once I quit school, that was it. I had to go. So I got a job, got my own place. I went to work for the phone company in Lafayette. I worked there for four and a half years. When I lost my weight, when I lost 100 pounds, I could not buy all new clothes. So I quit the phone company and went to work for a clothing store where I got 25% off. <laughs> So I had a brand new wardrobe. And then, you know, the 70s hit, and 1977 hit, and we had one club in fucking Lafayette at the time, and I got tired of going out dancing, and every, my cousin started looking at me. With a, 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 uh uh, no, we first cousins, motherfucker. Turn away, turn away, go marry somebody else. So I moved to Houston, Texas in 1977, went to work in the oil and gas industry. I stayed in that industry for 22 years as a senior executive financial secretary. Then I decided it was a good idea to open up a restaurant and a catering company. Now, if you think this is a good idea, let me give you a bit of advice. Go to the bank, take all your money out, get in your car, go down the highway at a high rate of speed, roll down the window, throw all your fucking money out the window, okay? It's a lot easier, your back won't hurt, and it's quick. <laughs> So I went back to work temporary after that for the oil company, but I found something that I wanted to do by myself. I wasn't going back to the restaurant business, and for some reason, God put comedy in my way. He put it right in my face. And at the age of 40, I became a stand-up comedian. I quit, I, you know, I stayed in the business for a little bit, but started doing stand-up. This job, that was 28 years ago. This job has taken me around the world seven times. I've been in Japan, South Korea, Okinawa, Sicily, Guam, Kosovo. I've been to Germany. 
And in 2008, 2009, and 2010, I was blessed enough and being able enough to go to Iraq and entertain our men and women in the military. Oh, I have, I have sat behind the seat of a C-130 aircraft and actually flown the plane for about five minutes. I drove a gunboat on the Persian Gulf. I slept in one of Saddam Hussein's palaces, okay? And I rode Blackhawks every fucking place we went in, in, in country in Iraq. And then I toured all of the, I've been to almost every state in our great country. Uh, and that's the 28 years of that. Then six years ago, again, God blessed me by giving me this opportunity to enter entertain on cruise ships. So, 20 to 24 days out of the month, I'm on a cruise ship somewhere in the Caribbean or in Mexico. So, I forgot. But what's funny is, when some people, they, they, don't even, they don't even skip a beat. When I tell them I've never been married, they just go, so you're a lesbian. <laughs> If you are gay, more power to you. But I like dick. But here's the deal. I want dick to come to my house and do what dick's got to do. Then I want dick to go back to dick's house. Because I didn't take a grown man to raise his ass. You understand me? And I found out a long time ago, especially growing up in South Louisiana, what comes with dick is fucking family. And there's always the most controlling mother-in-law in the fucking world. That bitch is in your business 24 fucking 7. And there's a daddy, but you never see daddy. He's in a shed somewhere working on the lawnmower for the last 35 fucking years. There's a bipolar sister and there's a brother with eyes way too fucking close to each other. That's what comes with dick. No thank you. <laughs> and I'm pretty certain there's not one man that could have gone through menopause with me. <laughs> Trust me. Now I'm gonna change subjects. You young people pay the fuck attention right here. You understand me? And you young girls, oh, especially you that size five, size zero. <laughs> Okay, I see y'all walking around the ship in your little bikinis looking good. Take pictures. Take a lot of fucking pictures. Because in 40 years, you're going to cry like a motherfucker going, that's what I used to look like. Where the fuck did this bullshit come from? Holy shit. One little girl went, well, menopause can't be as bad as PMS. I get so moody. Bitch, you ain't seen the grand finale of fucking moody. I can walk around this ship and tell you, every woman that's gone through menopause, all I have to listen for is three fucking words. Y'all not hot. No, it's just me. Don't tell me y'all not hot. No, feel my neck right here. Y'all not hot. guys walked into your cabin. It was so fucking cold. You could hang meat in that son of a bitch. You walking around, you got the robe on, the blue towel, you got the, you got the elephant towel am on your head with the ears over your ears going, baby, it's kind of cold. No, bitch, it ain't cold. No, motherfucker. I'm calling guest services. I want two more fucking fans in this bitch. You understand me? Don't tell me you not hot. Oh my God, but here's the deal. I, you young girls, your mothers, you're gonna hear about it now. Our mothers didn't tell us shit about it because nobody wanted to talk about it. You said menopause, you're like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And what scares me is I wonder how many of our foremothers ended up in an insane asylum or burned as a witch just because they were going through menopause and nobody fucking knew what it was. It's like, what happened to your mama? We don't know, man. She went crazy. She was walking around the house one day just, you know, just saying, y'all not hot. She was ate up with the devil. We had to put her down. <laughs> to this day, doctors don't fucking know what to do with us. And like I said, you young girl, oh man, I, I'm stunned at the, the feminine hygiene shit y'all got today compared to us. Holy crap, y'all got wings and things and bling and this day and that day. Fuck, I saw one the other day, tampon pearl. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Wait, is that like Cracker Jack? You get a, a present with that? You get a little toy? And then I saw a commercial for tampon silver. Bitch was climbing a mountain. I'm like, some bitch, it gives you superpowers. <laughs> All we could do was go horseback riding and swimming. Damn. 
and some of you young women, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Older women know what I'm talking about. Listen, man, I, my mother didn't say shit to me. Even about my period, I had to talk to a girl two grades higher than me to find out what the fuck was going on. I remember when mine started, I was at a tournament, basketball tournament. I was hungry, you know, my stomach started hurting. Okay, I was a big girl when my stomach hurt, it meant I was hungry. So, I, I ate two fucking hot dogs. I got home and went, fuck, that wasn't the problem. My mama walks in and runs out the bathroom screaming. I'm like, what? The? I'm dying. She's gone for 20 minutes. I'm like, this is not the time to have a cigarette break, mama. Where are you? She comes back 20 minutes later, hand to Jesus, with a pamphlet for me to read. This funky looking belt. <laughs> which looks so good when you wore stretch pants. And a pad that looked like I had a fucking head wound. <laughs> she throws all this shit at me and then runs out <laughs> screaming, today you are a woman. I'm 12. Now, when it comes to menopause, I don't care who you are. You can be the nicest fucking woman on the planet. You may have never said a cuss word in your life, but when that hot flash hits you, it's like somebody sticks a hot poker up your ass. It's like, flame on. And you do not know when it's going to hit. You can, you can be at church. You can be talking to the pastor going, hey, pastor, how you doing? Happy night. Fuck you. I am so sorry. That's, I am so sorry. That, you're not hot. No, feel my neck. You're not hot. And God bless you guys that got to live with us. How many times you woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, she is standing on top of you naked. Fix the fucking air conditioner. I want to see penguins in this motherfucker. You understand me? Happy feet, happy, you not hot. You don't feel my neck, you not hot. And then all of a sudden, we are the karate kid with the fucking blankets. Blankets on, blankets on, blankets on, blankets on, blankets on. Fuck, I'm hot, I'm cold, I'm hot. Fuck! Now you young men, pay attention. Put this somewhere in your brain for about 20 years, 30 years from now. You're gonna come home and you're gonna walk in your house. And it's gonna be so fucking cold. And you're gonna start walking towards that thermostat. <laughs> As we like to call it, dead man walking. Take a picture of it, because that's the last time you're gonna see that bitch. Because from the back of the house, that princess, that queen that you married, that you love the sound of her sexy, silky voice. From the back of the house, you're gonna hear this. Don't touch that motherfucker. <laughs> then a knife will go past your left ear. That's why I tell people when they start, all these young guys, I want a woman for president. That's fine, I do too, but you better make sure that bitch went through menopause. Cause shit's gonna disappear. <laughs> Countries. <laughs> she will call up a terrorist and go, yeah, you fucking with me? <laughs> Look up, motherfucker. <laughs> Trust me, you do not want the State of the Union address to start with, y'all not hot. <laughs> What I feel sorry, I do feel sorry for the men because y'all really don't fucking know what's going on. It's like, oh, oh, oh. she was fine yesterday. She tried to kill me today. But here's the deal, I think y'all need, y'all need a warning system or something, man. So I think like a, you know, like a candle, like a big black fucking candle. That's this big, and then when you flip it on, battery operated, big, that right when you hit it, red flames that just come shooting out. That way you see that bitch when you come home. And when you come home and you open the door and you go, fuck the candle's lit. Something. Ah, and you're looking around for the kids and the cat and the dog, you can't find them, you go, and she killed them. And then from in the back of the house, you hear this little bitty voice, Daddy? Daddy, we cold, Daddy. Daddy, 
Jimmy can't feel his legs, Daddy. Come on, y'all get in the car. Come on, get in the car. Grab the cat and the dog. Come on, we're going to Holiday Inn. Get in the car. But Daddy, we have no clothes. We'll stop at Walmart. Get in the damn car. Why, Daddy? What's wrong with Mama, Daddy, Daddy, wife? Get in the fucking car. Why, that? Because the candle has been lit. God bless y'all. See y'all in Cozumel. Ladies and gentlemen, you're up and down.